My name is Lauren Hansen and I'm an exercise physiologist at the Cerebral Palsy Alliance and clinical supervisor here. Today I want to share with you a bit about what an accredited exercise physiologist does and the type of clients we work with and the type of referrals that we're working on or goals we work on with those clients. Um, so exercise physiology, we work on supporting rehabilitation and well-being for people living with a disability through sport and exercise. An accredited exercise physiologist or AEP is an allied health profession who utilizes exercise as a therapeutic modality for the treatment and management of acute, subacute, or chronic medical conditions, injuries, or disabilities. We base this on evidence-based interventions, and we prescribe holistic exercise programs tailored to improve overall condition and quality of life for these individuals. We often summarize this by saying that we are using um, exercise is medicine. So it's the principle of prescribing an exercise program specific to the individual that's gonna meet their needs. Um, it's holistic because we look at an individual's um, pain, their quality of life, their sleep, and also nutrition or other lifestyle goals which might um, incorporate into developing and improving their well-being. Some of the conditions that AEPs work with and that I've worked with in my time as an exercise physiology, physiologist include cerebral palsy, autism spectrum disorder, Down syndrome, spinal cord injury, spina bifida, diabetes, hearing impairments, multiple sclerosis, and the other ones that I've listed here. Um, within the neuroscience space, you might recognize many of these disorders and disabilities. Um, and wonder how an exercise physiology, physiologist can work with these individuals. Um, and it's often multimodal. So for someone with, um, who's had a stroke, for example, exercise is important both in the prevention and the management following a stroke. So many of the risk factors for a stroke can be impacted by exercise, being overweight, overweight um, developing diabetes or poor cardiovascular response such as high blood pressure can also can all be impacted through regular exercise so by regularly engaging in physical activity an individual's risk factor for having a stroke will decrease similarly uh, following a stroke exercise physiologists can assist with improving an individual's life. That might be through improved mobility, improved strength or functional tasks, such as being able to stand up out of a chair or walk up and down stairs. Because a stroke, as just one example of many of these conditions, um, is very individualized. The way it impacts an individual will change and therefore the exercise that's prescribed to someone or the support needs that someone needs following a stroke will change over time. Um, and this is that type of tailored evidence-based intervention that an exercise physiologist will do in response to a condition. The benefits of exercise are varied and many of us already know about most of them. Um, so for example, exercise can increase cardiorespiratory fitness and strength, improve our health and well-being, decrease anxiety and stress, maintain mobility and range of motion. So as someone becomes older, um, there's what's known as a cycle of deconditioning. So um, a functional task might become harder or someone's mobility might become impaired. And over the time, this can lead to a gradual deconditioning. As one thing becomes harder, they might find that they're removing themselves more and more from society or from the amount of tasks that they can complete independently. So um, the professional in the exercise space can step in and help them maintain that mobility. Um, so reduced regular exercise decreases the risk of mortality 
due to cardiovascular and circulatory complications, such as decreasing the risk of stroke or heart attack, like I spoke about earlier. Consistent exercise improves sleep patterns and the quality of your sleep. Improved bone health, individuals with osteoporosis um, are one of our major um, target age groups as people become elderly and their bone strength declines it becomes increasingly important to work on balance so being able to walk safely and decrease someone's risk of falls is something that can be targeted through exercise and also the strength of those bones so if someone does have a fall they're less likely to become injured as a result of that fall um, exercise programs can also be tailored to focus on specific life goals. Often that is increasing or maintaining someone's independence, such as the confidence to walk across a road, go to the swimming pool or go grocery shopping. Being able to maintain those tasks of daily life can have a huge impact on someone's confidence to return home, such as an outpatient in a hospital. So being able to um, have the confidence to stand up out of their chair, to write a shopping list, to be able to push the shopping trolley are all the types of really functional day-to-day -day tasks that we would work on as an exercise physiologist in collaboration with the greater health team. So the allied health team would often work together all um, targeting our specific areas such as an occupational therapist might work, work on some aspects of that program working with us and we'd work on their strength and stamina. Social opportunities. Exercise also provides a really beneficial way to interact with other people in a really positive light. So during training and a result of increased opportunities to engage. So by being mobile, by staying on their feet, people are able to get out of their house and to engage in group programs or to be able to take their dog for a walk up to the park and then see other people and get that social interaction that everybody craves and which has a huge impact on our quality of life. There are multiple different forms of exercise physiology interventions and I just wanted to show you this just to give an example that it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. So it is going to depend on what the individual's needs are at the time, and that might change significantly. So when someone first leaves hospital as an outpatient, they might need individual exercise physiology to target um, a specific goal or because of the increased support needs that they have at that point in time. And then they'd progress into potentially a group setting. So the group is really beneficial um, for that social engagement. Um, in an older adult age group, the there are multiple exercise physiology groups out in the community, and some are targeted towards tasks like balance or mobility groups, or even um, stronger bone groups to help Individuals with a common goal, they'll all work together and that forms that collaboration. So a team approach is a really wonderful way to improve someone's quality of life, to feel that they're working with other people, they've got that added social support and they're more likely to engage and to stay engaged in physical activity. Another type of exercise physiology intervention is hydrotherapy. So it's not always land-based, sometimes we operate in pools as well and a hydrotherapy pool is a nice warm 32 to 34 degree pool which provides the added benefits of the support of water. We're able to do a lot of our interventions that might be at risk for people in a falls. People at risk of falls such as someone following a spinal cord injury or a stroke might be able to engage in activity safely within a hydrotherapy pool where the risk of falling is much more reduced. Telepractice is another type of exercise physiology, a way that we deliver that same intervention. So we're working towards the same goals that they would have in any gym or land-based therapy or pool-based therapy, we can work towards in telepractice. And for an outpatient that's just leaving a hospital setting, this can provide them with the support to do an exercise 
and integrate it into their daily life and make it part of their regular lifestyle from the support of their own home. So the therapist is able to see what their home, household setting looks like and adapt it to the individual rather than prescribing a home exercise program, which the individual then has, um, then has to complete independently. We can dial in and see what that household setting looks like and support them and talk to them throughout that whole program. So that's another way to really increase adherence which is one of our key goals of exercise physiology is really integrating and creating a healthy, holistic lifestyle for that person. So by integrating exercise and healthy habits into all aspects of their life, we're able to provide a lasting impact from our therapy. Um, you're probably wondering what the difference is between an exercise physiologist and a physiotherapist or a personal trainer. And um, that's a very valid question. So an exercise physiologist is really looking at that holistic approach to lifestyle change. So we're working on supported behavior change to um, prevent and manage chronic injuries and illnesses. A physiotherapist works on developmental motor, motor skills and the management of acute musculoskeletal disorders. So when an injury becomes chronic, then it moves into the exercise physiology space because we're working on the social, the psychological and all of the other interacting pieces of the puzzle to manage and overcome that chronic pain. Um, a personal trainer works on strength and conditioning and they will provide assistance with lifestyle change. So we often work collaboratively with a physiotherapist, for example, prescribing the equipment to support an individual to walk at home. They might be prescribed with a forearm support frame. The exercise physiologist would then, would then step in and work on um, developing the strength and stamina to use that walking frame and the strength to be able to stand up out of their chair to begin walking. Once a program is in place, a personal trainer is really good for stepping in and assisting with that lifestyle change. So to promote long term, they can um, assist through following a prescribed program. They can be that ongoing motivation and ongoing support for an individual. And we would often work collaboratively. So a personal trainer might provide some of the weekly training and an exercise physiologist would oversee and progress the program as a person's goals and needs change over time. when to refer to an exercise physiologist. There are multiple different reasons. And as you've seen before, there, were, there are all the different conditions that an exercise physiologist can work with individuals that have them. So um, prevention and management of chronic disease. It might be that an individual has a lifelong condition such as cerebral palsy. In this case, um, as an exercise physiologist, I'd be working with an individual to reduce their sedentary behaviours. So because someone has CP, they might find that they're utilising a wheelchair for a lot of their day and they have more sedentary time or more time seated in their wheelchair than the general population. So as an um, exercise physiologist, I can amend their program and help them to stay active from taking into consideration their mobility needs. Um, so really reducing secondary comorbidities associated with being sedentary or having a reduced access to physical activity. There's also people with behavioral challenges that find that they have um, limited access to physical activity. So um, if they have verbal outbursts or need additional support to actually follow a program, they might be limited in attending a community gym or joining a local sports team. But with the support of an exercise physiologist, we can put plans in place and put the education in place 
to assist either the local sports club to integrate that person into a sporting team or to provide the infrastructure and support for them to participate. Functional strength and cardiovascular fitness training is another key area that we um, would work with. So if an individual could be assisted through increased fitness, then that would be a good time to refer to an exercise physiologist. Weight loss, weight gain, or management of weight is another key area. So we'll often work collaboratively with nutritionists or dietitians on weight gain or weight loss for an individual. Education, as you can anticipate, is a huge part of what we do. So integrating healthy lifestyle habits into someone's everyday life. It's not just about exercise for 20 minutes a day once a week, but it's about um, making lifestyle changes so that the healthy lifestyle is the way forward for that individual so that they're aware of what they can do within their own life to increase their independence, to increase their quality of life and how to be physically active throughout their day. Even if their situation has changed, if they've um, undergone surgery or a major change in their life conditions, such as a spinal cord injury or following a stroke, and they then um, yeah, need additional education and support of how to integrate physical activity into their life again. Um, that might include education to community gyms and personal trainers to commence a regular exercise routine. So um, an exercise physiologist, for example, I work with some clients and take them to a local community gym. So I'll show them how to use the equipment, how to set the equipment and make it um, tailored for their needs and how their wheelchairs, their electric wheelchairs can come in and equipment can be changed to fit the electric wheelchair into the space. And then once they're comfortable doing that, that's program they can continue independently with or without my support, depending on their needs. And again, advice about participation in community sports and recreational groups. A lot of different reasons that an exercise physiologist can be um, referred to for someone with a variety of conditions and hopefully this just gives you a bit of a, spo a scope of reaching out and seeing where it could be useful to some of your clients. The Exercise and Sports Science Australia ESSA website is a good place to reach out and contact your local exercise physiologist for more information and support.